Hello everyone. Welcome to today's NPTEL course on remote sensing and GIS for rural development. This is week 10, lecture 4. In this week, we have been looking at online platforms and GIS platforms with remote sensing data that can help us to quickly download NDVI data and other crop vegetation index data. Across the research literature, NDVI ranks number one for having a lot of remote sensing based studies for <clears throat> assessing the vegetation, health of vegetation, area, acreage, etc. Because it is very simple to use, very efficient and open source. We also have vegetation fraction, which a lot of these platforms house. Uh, and before we get into the other indicators, I wanted to showcase the four different platforms that house NDVI, the one we saw in the previous lectures. Uh, in the last lecture, we looked at Google Earth Engine, which keeps on updating. And today we will be looking at the NASA's data sets. Why NASA's data sets is it has high benefits on spatial and temporal resolutions when compared to the other data sets that we have discussed initially. And because of the high global coverage and spatial and temporal resolutions, there is multiple scientific articles on it. As students, whenever you want to collect data and form a hypothesis, or if you would like to support an idea, the best way to do it is first do a literature review. In the literature review, you find papers, recent papers, and look at what methods they have used. And you will find some technologies that everyone can use, example, NDVI. There are other higher indicators with better resolution, uh, so-called, or better analysis. However, they might be expensive. We need to make sure that everyone can map, at least in the initial stages. And that is what NDVI does for you. It's very simple. It is NIR minus visible red by NIR plus visible red. And almost all open source satellites nowadays have these bands and even the older satellites. So let's move on. Uh, and we have uh, actually looked at ISRO Bhuvan in the previous lectures and then Google Earth Engine. I had also indicated that there is some codings that you could do. Uh, as I said, I will refrain from teaching how to code because that is not a uh, part of the current exercise. Uh, coding, there's a lot of forums that you could go and, and find the codes. Um, you can just Google and say that Google Earth Engine uh, making charts and then you'll find a lot of videos. What is missing is how does that relate to a particular topic? Because that is domain expertise. So in this lecture series, the entire um, remote sensing and GIS for rural development, not only am I giving you the access to remote sensing tools, but also making sure that you know where to use it. Again, remote sensing tool and GIS is taught in civil engineering, earth science engineering, uh, geography, uh, remote sensing as a class by itself, satellite technologies. Um, in our rural development courses, I teach it. Uh, now even policy teaches it, law teaches it. But where we would be different, this NPTEL course is very different, is we align it to a particular objective, which is rural development. And of the rural development, we assess that um, croppings uh, have a very, very high impact um, because uh, most of the population depends on agriculture. So we had more focus on it. We will slowly look at other options also, but please remember that other rural development indicators and indices that we initially started with, rural infrastructures, rural roads, rural schools, rural hospitals, all these have very, very less data 
uh, and remote sensing is one of the best that can help. Still, there's much more to go. Whereas agriculture, at least you can see the plants, you can see the, the croppings, farming, harvest, etc. Suppose there's a building and it is covered on top with trees. For example, IIT Bombay, if you take a satellite or a drone image, you'll see a lot of trees. So you cannot count how many buildings it is because the buildings are under the trees, right? So the, the, the aerial imagery will not be just enough. So there's other data that is also needed as I spoke about synergized data mapping. So after uh, week 10, I hope to again revisit the synergized mapping and showcase some data that has been used widely for rural infrastructure mapping. So let us uh, start with the NASA data sets. I will explain the Earth Explorer and also go to uh, this DISC uh, data set that we have already looked at in the previous uh, lectures, uh, just for the vegetation fraction we'll look at. So let me share the Earth Explorer website. So this is how the Earth Explorer uh, website looks like. Um, and we have already used these in our hands-on exercise. I uh, haven't logged in, I'll keep it uh, unlogged for now. So right now you could see that we have multiple options, right? So when, when you open a Google Earth, uh, Earth Explorer, uh, I could open it again for you just in case. Um, let me open it again. So uh, if I uh, open uh, the Earth Explorer again, Okay, it's the same link that I have shared. Uh, you will see that it opens on a particular location. Okay, uh, and in South Dakota. So because they want to center it in the US. So all you can do is if you move your mouse on the frame, you will see a hand, you click it, it will hold it. It's called pitch and then you uh, pinch and then you uh, move. Okay, so or you can, the best way to zoom out uh, to a particular location. Zoom out as much as possible and then just drag it. It's easier to go to India like this. Okay. So what happens here is we need to show where we would like to work on. So here we can zoom in by moving the mouse uh, in front. Okay, so let me just put it back on Maharashtra because we have used Maharashtra for the other NDVI indicators. Okay, so um, you can zoom in more if you need. Uh, and then, yeah. So let's keep it at Pune region, Nasik region. Okay, so good. So we have this Pune and Nasik region. Uh, and then, as I said, what we'll be doing is there's a lat long that has already been uh, given. We'll be using that. Uh, but more importantly, on the top, it is a search criteria. Uh, you can use a, a shape file that you have already uh, used. You can download it and put it on the system and then use it. But also go to GeoCoder, which is kind of a little bit advanced. So let's skip that part. We will go to Polygon. So you will draw the Polygon where you want the uh, area to be disclosed. So when I use this, uh, you can use a map by clicking uh, the previous map that we selected. Um, but uh, again, we'll use a new coordinates. Okay. Or you can do a circle. You can click on top and then uh, zoom out and zoom in, like for example, like this. And then you can put a radius and then the circle is, is um, uh, created, let's say, 1000 meters, that is one kilometer. So you can see a big circle coming up. Right. Uh, or you can clear the circle and then I'm just show it back. All right. I'm going to clear all my polygons coordinates. Okay. Again, putting it back to Pune region, right? Um, and then you can have a circle, predefined area. You can add a shape file uh, after you log, uh, log in, but we'll use a polygon. So once you click the polygon, you'll have to click coordinate. So this is one coordinate. Uh, let's say we can just use Pune top, this rough Pune. You can also see the grids, right? So you can see these lines. 
these are each style of the data uh, and uh, it will be used for searching the data if needed. Okay, that would be enough. And then uh, this is the coordinate system we have. Then you can down uh, come down here to say that uh, what is the cloud cover you are okay with. 100% uh, cloud cover doesn't make sense. So let's keep it at 75%, okay? And then result options, you can see how many results you want to see. Let's say 10 is enough. And then the date range is, uh, we'll go just for this uh, recent year. Okay, so, or December, because we use December 2021 in uh, um, the um, Bhuvan, but we'll use December 2022. Uh, and then uh, we will say, actually we can go to September also. September 1 to December 2022. And, and then we can say search all months. You can say search all months and then um, click on uh, the result options. So you can click all if needed. And it is also good. Okay. Okay. This is good. Now we can go to data sets. So just sh sh uh, pick what data set you want. So this is on the top also. Uh, and here you have plethora of satellite remote sensing data that you could use. Uh, I'll just show you some of it because um, just for uh, NDVI, we'll come straight to NDVI, but I also wanted to explain this uh, slide. Uh, aerial imagery is just a photograph picture of the location. For example, you're looking at a post-flood uh, analysis and you want to see the impact, the damage of buildings and all, which is not an indicator-based approach. So for that, you can use these high-resolution uh, images uh, just as aerial images, okay? These are aerial images, uh, not only taken by satellites, most of it is flights. So you can see here, um, uh, flight imagery, Antarctic flight line maps. Um, and then uh, most, most importantly, uh, these are all uh, flights, whereas this is space photography from clouds. And then we have AVHR is also a different uh, sensor uh, placed on uh, satellites. CEO's legacy is there. Legacy means it's kind of uh, outdated also. Uh, commercial satellites, these are the two commercial satellites that Earth Explorer has bought for you or have a subscription. Uh, it's not the real, real um, high-end um, sa uh, satellites where they have now, Iconos and Orbital View. Uh, for example, high-end as in, uh, they will not give it for free. Okay, so the freer versions are, are the uh, meta versions or the lower uh, higher resolution versions. Uh, and then there is declassified data, which is something that it was classified once, and now it has been declassified. Uh, some um, data on the borders and etc. cetera. Uh, these are DEMs. Uh, so we have all these DEMs. We do not have the Indian satellites, but if you come down, you have ISRO satellite. So no other uh, big satellite name is there except uh, NASA and uh, the European satellite uh, regions um, explicitly here. So you have ResourceSat, uh, both the AWIFS and LIST3. Uh, these are good aerial uh, imagery and uh, a lot of analysis can be done using this. Uh, so you have digital maps, the National Atlas maps. Uh, and then digital line graphs are there, um, earth observation systems, uh, and then uh, fiducials, global fiducial marks, uh, HCM, ISA, all these are sensors. Then the land use land cover, you can have a global land use cover, land cover trends, photos, etc. Landsat is the real important one because uh, it has been a legacy. 1960s till date, it has been taking uh, images. Now we are at Landsat 8 and 9, um, and you can get all these Landsat images. As I said, legacy is the older versions. Uh, you can see from 1984, 1960s, 1972s, et cetera, et cetera, you have data. 1960s, you won't get much of India, but you'll get um, across the other regions. So there's a collection level one. You can see that these are the collection level ones, Landsat 1 to 5, 4 to 5, 7, 8, 9. So the 1 to 5 is the older versions. Uh, you can click on this to get the collection info. It will open on a different page uh, and tell you what uh, these uh, data Landsat 1 in includes. Uh, and it says 1972 to 1992. So, so it's, it's uh, 20 years of data um, uh, at 60 meters resolution. This is the oldest versions, uh, very good versions, I would say. Uh, and uh, 1960s is kind of reconstructed data. It's not actual data, but still there. So that is 1972. So just let's look at how the resolution has changed in these Earth Explorer data sets. Uh, now you will see the level collection two, okay? Landsat four to five. So the previous one was one to four, one to two. Um, 
it's asking me to take a survey live, but not now, later I do it. Uh, so then we have the level uh, collection two, which is Landsat four to five at 30 meter resolutions. So the previous one was at 60 meter resolutions, which was Landsat one to five. Then the four to five is at 30 meter resolutions. This is the four and five versions are 30 meter resolutions. Um, and then this is also going to be the Landsat 7 collection, um, uh, which is really, really successful at uh, 30 meter uh, data, but it is multispectral. Uh, so the previous ones were just uh, normally red, green, and blue, uh, whereas uh, the multispectral data came into existence much later. And then we have the uh, 8 and 9, the recent ones. You can see the, the metadata for it. Uh, these are, in some locations, very, very high resolution. Uh, and it has also the thermal infrared sensors uh, and at 30 meter resolution. So the Landsat goes best for 30 meter resolutions, but the sensor has been updated. Uh, so now we have thermal uh, infrared sensors and are actually uh, somewhere around bi-weekly to monthly, you get the data. So again, Landsat, we will not be using for this part uh, because we want products. We want products that are being taken from Landsat models uh, whatever it is. So uh, we will go to the uh, LC map. Uh, so these are two uh, specialized specialized maps and then NASA collections of DEM, MODIS, uh, um, and then we have uh, vegetation indices. If you do click on the vegetation indices, we have the MODIS derived in the indicators for vegetation. Okay. And then we have the water, water reservoir, et cetera, et cetera, eco stress. Uh, all these are related to uh, rural entities, NASA DEM, uh, vegetation index phenology. Phenology is mostly on the plant types and those kind of things. Um, and then we do have the uh, IIRS collections, which also we will be using for uh, our vegetation indexes. So you can see here, these are the vegetation indexes. Okay, and then the radar is more important for penetrations. So these have, um, it penetrates through the ground. So these mostly will have the soil moisture and uh, land um, elevation data, much, much higher resolutions. UAS unmanned uh, systems are there, DEMs. Uh, so these are drone kind of images. Um, and then uh, we can see uh, point cloud, ortho. Okay, let's click this one. You could see that uh, the unmanned systems also will carry uh, drones, unmanned aircraft uh, systems. Um, uh, so we have, um, these are high, high resolution uh, and uh, we have 2008 to uh, present, but only small areas. Again, you cannot fly drones across the entire region. So you can see here, there are some um, uh, taken in the New Mexico, which is, which New Mexico is not in Mexico, it is in the United States. Uh, so you'll have some of these data here. Okay, and these are the un unmanned aerial vehicles, we call them, or um, uh, UAS. Um, and then we have aircraft vehicles or systems also, they would say. So the A differs in how you use it. And then we have the meditation monitoring, which we will be using now. Uh, and we will be using the EVIS uh, DIR, NDVI, because we, are, we want NDVI. Uh, I'll just show you what is happening. So if you click on, let's say, um, yeah, NDVI, this one, um, it will say that it, it doesn't get updated, uh, no longer produced after October 2022. So until then, you can use it. So if you want to use the recent ones, don't use the, the, these data set, uh, but you can build a, a legacy of data. For example, from 1972, you can use Landsat data. And then from 1999s, uh, 2000s, MODIS, and then uh, from until 2022, you can use a particular MODIS and then jump into Landsat again. So it's okay because uh, the sensor is actually sensing the data. Okay, so we will close this. Just all these are kind of outdated except this one. So I'll just click that one. LST is land surface temperature, which is important to uh, show the stress on uh, plants and land. Uh, so we have this, uh, and then I'm just going to click result. So we picked a date. Uh, we pick the date range and we also pick the uh, the type of satellite that we want. Uh, and here is what we get. So we get uh, 25 images for this particular area for one month, right? I'm sorry, September to December. So it's, it's around uh, 15, 15 days a, a data set. Uh, so what, what are these is, this is a thumbnail to show the footprint of the data. So if you click it, it will show you that the, the, the tile, the tile, entire tile where the data has been collected. Uh, you can take it out and then uh, go to this one to show the uh, data set for that region. So I'm going to zoom in. So this is a pre-visualization so that you can look at the data before you download the data to make sure that it doesn't have errors uh, or it doesn't have 
uh, any um, issues with the resolutions and so or too much cloud cover for example uh, it is it is still downloading so that is why you would see um, the uh, blurry image okay yeah so this is also good in terms of the satellite data you can see that a lot of satellite data is there and all these dates are there so the end date um uh start date is there so this is somewhere 6 to 15 so as i said within every 15 days uh the data comes in uh so uh, the start date was uh, in september i'm sorry november 6 to november 15 so this is a november month uh, of data so you can compare between uh, not readily here but you can compare in the previous region so this is 2023 uh, we did not give 2023 but it also populates it just for our um uh, need uh, and then uh, here it is 2022 9 8 and 9 so this is the last week of uh, the analysis that we wanted to see we have uh, 25 images here and so the entire map cannot be downloaded that's what this is saying but you can uh, download only the maps uh, that are available with the with this link okay so if you uh, want to download you have to log in so it will ask you to log in and then you can download this data we have already showed you how to log in and download the data so while it is uh, getting um um uh, re resolution increased and stuff uh, let me just pick one month Okay, let's see if we, we do have January. So let's do January uh, to Jan end. And then I'm just going to go do the circle, apply, let's say 1,000 meters or one kilometer. You can change the units here, kilometers, miles, et cetera. So it applies that to the region. Now you see there's a lot of uh, housing there. So I don't want just the housing. So let's say two kilometers radius. Um, and then I apply, so it gets bigger. Uh, and then I have this cloud cover is okay for now. Um, and then we can go to the results. We have to see the data set. Oh, EVIDR is, is clicked. And then results. There you go. You have all these results. Um, and you can actually see them uh, as a full tile. So you can see how, uh, if you want to quickly look at it, we can look at uh, within the month, how it has changed. So from one to uh, second Feb uh, February month we have, uh, so you see that the entire India is almost green with NDVI, high NDVI in this basin. Um, and then we can also see the previous uh, results. So you can download this and uh, need if you need, you can go back to the, uh, clear clear the uh, results or go to search criteria again. Um, let's just take the uh, summer month, the previous summer, which is May, May 1 to uh, stake, July end. Okay. And then the data set results. You could see that now we have pushed the date to uh, June, July, August, uh, those uh, those terms. Okay, so if you look at May, which is the fifth month, these are the fifth month, and then you put the um, NDVI on. So like this, so this one should have been capturing the image, but there's a lot of uh, black uh, space, which means the data is not good. So please look at the data before you uh, download it. So this one we can remove saying, I don't want to do it because you'll, you'll spend uh, your memory uh, and uh, taking all the data. So now you can see here, all these uh, yellow spots are no, not growing and the Ganges region is also not growing. So NDVI is very, very less. Um, uh, but when we go to uh, the, the monsoon months, I'm just going to click this one. And now you can see all the green. What is the white? It is the cloud. So uh, the cloud cover, if we have increased and said uh, above 50% cloud cover do not show, then all the data, this tile will not come because uh, in my region Pune, there's a lot of cloud cover. You can see here if I zoom in uh, and if it is full of cloud cover, it will not uh, take this image. So this particular image will not be showcased here. So you don't have to download this image and then work on it. Okay. So this is about the Earth Explorer and NDVI, ready-made NDVI products. 
I also wanted to show you uh, the other NASA product, which is uh, GISDIC. So GISDIC is, is also used for a lot of other uh, data sets as we have seen in the rainfall, uh, grace data can be taken from here, etc. But you can do the same as browse by catalog. Okay, so you can say browse by catalog and say what data you want to use, uh, measurement, temporal resolution. You just see how big this, this database is. Okay, so let's see measurement and see how many variables are coming. So all these can be taken from this database. You can take carbon monoxide, land site, land use, land cover classifications. Uh, this, it just goes on and on. It's a really, really big extensive uh, data set. But if you already know what you want, you can uh, click NDVI and then you can pick a, a date range. Okay, so you can pick a date or just leave it and you can pick a bounding box. Why is this important? So that you have an area of interest rather than downloading for the entire uh, world. So I'm just going to click on the pencil and then draw a box. So I'm going to draw a box along India and then there it is. The bounding box for India has been kept uh, and then you just click it back and then say search. So when you do search, it will search and give you for your bounded region, which is India, the box I clicked, and then I drew a box. You just have to click on the pointer and then draw the box, uh, and then you will get these um, values. So here, what you could see is two data sets are up there. In, in this data collection, uh, there's only two data sets for NDVI as marked as NDVI. Um, it is the NASA's modest images, and you could see the resolution is monthly, and the spatial is one by one degree, so which is around 100 kilometers resolution. Uh, it's not that great, um, uh, but it has a long, long uh, time series from 2000 to date. And a lot of people have been using these uh, indicators. So you can see here that the, the um, image, uh, you can just click on this to uh, see the full image. Um, just to, for, for a verification process, it gives you the date, time. You can also download this image, save this image for your reports if you want. Uh, if you're working on a preliminary report, quickly, it just took what? Uh, two seconds to download this image, right? So from here, you just said, okay, I want to see this image and take it for this particular month also, July 2010. Uh, so uh, these can be used as a uh, proposal writing, those kind of images. Okay, so if you go back to data collections and then see what data is available, let's go back to GIS, DISC, uh, the full website. Uh, the, these two also I'll give. Access GIS is mostly to use it with uh, proprietary software. Uh, visualized data will go to Giovanni. Giovanni is um, another dashboard within the Earth Data Explorer uh, that is uh, only used for uh, visualizing the data uh, and then making uh, real time uh, analysis. Okay, so we will we will get into that uh, pretty soon, um, and then we'll have browse data at different uh, spatial, temporal resolutions, project, etc. Et so if you also wanted to, as I said, uh, I also wanted to say Grace. Uh, so you have the Grace data. You have uh, different versions of Grace. Uh, let's see if the bounding box is the same. The bounding box has gone. Uh, you can actually type in the values here, or you can draw the box again. So click on the box symbol and then say like this it can only be as a box you cannot put a uh, india boundary and take it out so it's normally 63 4 5 87 and 40 uh, so it's 100 actually normally i use uh, 63 uh, 500 and then uh, 40 uh, and then you can just say this one and then grace data is available so you can see here the earliest uh, data available on this is 1920 it's reconstructed data but it's still good uh, and then you can see grace data available so groundwater and soil moisture condition conditions from grace is available um, time resolution seven days from 2003 to 2022 uh, november um, and there is a lag uh, basically it's a models model uh, data um, and then you also have per day uh, glas estimates and grace estimates uh, of data so i can also click and showcase one of this data set And then show you how to access it. So, um, or since we we started with NDVI, also we'll do. But since we have this, so the cloud en enabled is where the data is stored. Uh, you can also have an uh, online uh, uh, storage uh, for your 
um, images. Uh, and then you have this grace data set, just a, a thumbnail to see how the data, the grids are present. Um, and then uh, groundwater storage percentile for August. So you have 100 percentile or 0.2 uh, based on the average values. So you can see more on the metadata here uh, and then documentation, data citations, et cetera. So this grace, uh, we did not see all these, but I will be showing now for uh, the um, uh, NDVI. So we're going to do the NDVI again for the same uh, box range. Date is fine, whatever date is fine. So we'll say, okay, do you want one of these? Uh, I will say Terra Modis I'll be using. Okay, so here we have the uh, global monthly grid data for Modis, um, which is indices, uh, using these products. Um, and then there is a uh, resolution uh, given here, monthly, uh, temporal is monthly, spatial is one degree by one degree, which is good. Uh, and then we have data citations, who you have to cite if you use the data. There is no pay. Uh, most of people do not even cite these uh, in the publications. It's good to cite it or at least cite the NASA team because they have processed this data, put this up and they're running it. So at the end of the day, they are not asking for money for using it. But if people use it, then the publications, they can show that so many people are using it uh, so that this program can continue. Okay, the government looks at how many people are using it and the only proof they can show is publications. So um, if I can write a letter saying that I use it, but I don't publish it, then what is the use? So please uh, cite it in your work, uh, use citations. Uh, you can hear, you have it here. So some documentation of this indi in indicators, same like ISRO uh, we did. If you click it, there's a PDF which opens up about the satellite, about how it is being used, etc. There you go. So we have all the resolutions um, and then um, a big report on how how these data was uh, um, taken, uh, the reflectance of red, uh, percentage of reflectance uh, and what it means. So if it is water, how, how much reflectance it is, uh, and then grass, uh, how much reflectance it is. So you have uh, cloud reflectance points in NIR spectrum from Landsat um, and different land use land cover types. Okay. So you have uh, different reflectances based on the land use land cover types. So a lot of lot of these are are done, and NDVI has been um, taken as this one. Same thing, NIR minus red by NIR plus red, um, uh, basically from the following equations. So if you want a theoretical uh, knowledge about NDVI, you can you can look at this also. Then when you load do it, please cite it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, information uh, that has been used about the satellites. Um, uh, where where it has been placed, uh, data calculations, estimations, those kind of things. Okay, references, again, you, you'll have multiple references for this um, data set and then data calendar. So the data calendar gives you on which month, which date the, the mission was taking data. Uh, and then uh, it also shows you that uh, there are, if there's any data gap because of instrumentation, uh, et cetera, they will, they will show you that in the, uh, data gaps if needed. Okay, so how do you access this data? That is another question people do ask. So there are two types given in this particular data set. Not a, all data set have two, some may have four or one depending on the uh, storage. Uh, you can click on first open archive data. This is a folder kind of data, which means uh, you will go here and just click, click, and then take the images out. Okay, instead of uh, downloading it from the uh, drawing the box and then taking it out, uh, you can just go to the uh, data set. So, so, for example, here we know that this data is from 2000 to 2016. Okay, so when you did online archive, this comes up. Uh, and it's it's open source, it's secure system, uh, anyone can download it. How to download files from this HTTPS service, you can read and understand. Uh, I'll just show you a quick demo. Here there's no lo login needed much, uh, you can see. So from 2000 to 2015, 2016, there is folders. So folders are kept for the data uh, and you just click on a particular year. So let's say I'm going to go 2009. And when you click 2009, what happens is there is a readme file uh, before I'll just show you, there's a readme file, these things, 
to show what this data is about read me so read me means it's a metadata about the data so you can just click on this it will open the uh, models what these products are uh, file format resolution everything is given which is like the metadata for you uh, and then it says sds1 means ndbi so the product if you want to download so when you download this data all of it will come out but you want to only use the ndbi so for which you say i just want sds1 so all these are included, right? So if you go back, uh, okay, I accidentally closed the entire thing, but I'll open it. Open online uh, data archive, and then you can see all the folders. I've clicked on 2009, and you can do the HDF. So that is the um, format, file format, gridded format, which is available. Uh, you can just download all of it if you want, but I'll just show you the convention, how it is given, modis, uh, is the uh, name mod vi okay uh, and in the mod vi we have the 200901 0001 is the month so you have the month uh, given as january and then 005 is the level of uh, the version the version of the data so maybe they would have uh, added uh, multiple criteria to clean the data new algorithms improvement because they don't stop with version one so they make it better every year so we have version five so all you could see is they go year month and date since modis is a monthly data as we could see here it is at monthly resolution there's no point of putting a date so they do not put a date Okay, so this is just the XML file. It will just populate here, um, the XML file, uh, if you need it. Uh, but if you want this, just click on it. It will ask you to download. Uh, first, you have to sign in, log in, and then you download. Okay, so, uh, and then you can just put it on your GIS database uh, platform, and then you can model it. So this is uh, the raw data that comes out. Uh, in the raw data, they have also made these um, uh, documentation for NDVI data. Uh, in the next lecture, I will start with the visualization of GEIS, GIC. So I'll just keep it here ready for you. Uh, you can also play with these two uh, links, uh, but we will uh, start with the visualized data and then we'll also uh, clarify on Sentinel Hub, uh, which is also a good, beautiful data set uh, platform uh, that we can use, but mostly for European satellites. They do have uh, NASA satellites. Uh, but uh, they want to promote uh, the Copernicus system. The Copernicus is um, a database for European satellites. So with this, um, I will see you in the next uh, lecture, uh, but feel free to go and uh, uh, look at these uh, different data collection, how to do it, image gallery, and then mission guidelines. Mission is the satellites. Um, and then see the recent news on how uh, these data sets have been used widely, globally, et cetera. So we're talking about the uh, highest downloaded data set in the world. Uh, the most used data sets in the world are from NASA uh, and uh, it is for all. Okay, So uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, collaborations are there between this data set and uh, a lot of countries, including India. Uh, and so please feel free to use it. Uh, and um, I, I do like the catalog uh, level. And then also you can limit to what temporal resolution you want. If you do, if you want temporal resolution at even uh, 99 minutes, these are model versions, don't worry about it. Three hours are there, one day. Uh, so I would say seven days onwards is really good because every day taking a data set is not important for rural development. Seven days to 15 days is good. And then 15 days monthly, annually, seasonally is there. So you can see from here. So you have uh, monthly. Uh, these two are also monthly. Then you have quarterly, then annual, six years, eight years, 36 years, die run. Okay. So you also have the project, which satellite you want to use. Uh, you can pick from satellite missions that are there, land, uh, Landsat, uh, Aqua, uh, Discovery Satellite Systems, et cetera, GLDAS. These are projects. And then the processing level, as I said, there are multiple versions and levels. The source of the data, these are the satellites themselves. Um, so you have NASA Trove, NASA, uh, and then um, Resource Set uh, won't be here, but it was in the other uh, NASA web page, right? And then we have the measurement. As I said, you can take the measurements. Uh, what you want to measure? Soil infiltration is also part of your uh, soils that we use, or subjects. Subjects. If you click vegetation, you will see what vegetations they have, uh, and in the vegetation index, uh, you will have uh, here. So what, what measurements they have are also here. All these are vegetation. 
uh, and then you can see you can find find sort them here by for example let's say um, you can click on more all the measurements come up so i'll say vegetation cover vegetation index vegetation water content is what i need and then i close this then now only these are filtered okay initially there was 36 more than 36 data sets now it's reduced let me reduce it further by saying that um, resolution come down here you have resolution uh, and uh, I want only monthly. So if I click monthly, only 14 uh, data sets will come, right? Okay, so this is how you could uh, reduce the number of data sets you want um, and then uh, filter it and use it for your analysis. So this I will stop here. I've given you an introduction of this website uh, and how it could be used, what type of uh, data. I'll see you in the next class. Thank you.